Hi, I'm Nandu Raul. Uh, I work at Thomas Jefferson University Hospital, and I'm going to be talking about the musculoskeletal ultrasound. Uh, we've been doing it for about 12 years, and we were one of the first ones to start musculoskeletal ultrasound. And we'll go into the ankle and foot ultrasound uh, for the lecture, and uh, we'll continue with that. Okay, we'll talk about the ankle and foot ultrasound today. Um, if you've been listening to musculoskeletal ultrasounds, one of the biggest things to remember in terms of technology is you need a high frequency probe, which is going anywhere from 10 to 14, preferably something that goes up to 14 or 15, uh, but also goes down to like 10 or maybe 8 because you need that for deeper structures. Uh, you can visualize muscle, tendons, bursa, joints, uh, skin, most of the other structures. The good thing about ultrasound for musculoskeletal is that you can use that to compare with the other side. Uh, there's no technical limitations for musculoskeletal uh, as you would see like in doing an abdomen or something else. Uh, if you're looking at the tendon, most tendon have an elongated appearance and I'll show you a couple of pictures for that. And they have these parallel fibers and here's an image of a tendon uh, where you can see nicely hyperechoic fibers going from the top end going towards the bottom. Most tendons appear this way because of the fibers. And what you have to be careful when you're scanning is to make sure that you're scanning at 90 degrees from the probe because otherwise you'll get a darker image, something that's called as anisotropy. Uh, and this outlines the border of the tendon from the top and at the bottom. Uh, I've kept this image intentionally. If you look at the image on the left, it shows you a much detailed picture. And the image on the right was about a few years ago, I would say almost not few, but 10 years ago when we started doing ultrasounds, you can see the image quality wasn't as good because the probe technology changed quite a bit. We could still do the work, but a big difference in terms of detail uh, of the tendon imaging that you can see. Uh, if you're looking at the scanning positions, the best thing we found for the ankle was to have a patient lie prone, and this is the edge of the table, and have the leg hang down from the patient's, uh, from the table's bottom end. That helps you to scan the posterior part, the medial and the lateral, and then you can also compare with the other side. Uh, if you look at the anatomy, uh, this is a picture of the cross-section of the, of the ankle, and this is kind of reversed intentionally because the picture in the book was the wrong way. Uh, what you want to see is the posterior part of the tendon, which is the Achilles. Then we look at the medial portion of the tendon of the ankle, which is the, these two tendons, and then we'll go to the lateral. And so that's the prone position, and then what you would get is you would get the anterior portion of the tendons or the ankle that you can have the patient set up. So there's the posterior, there's the medial, there's the lateral. And you can see in that same prone position, you can see pretty much all the tendons. So there's the posterior part. Let's first look at the Achilles tendon. And what you're looking in this portion is that's the probe position you want to have, uh, and that's the calcaneum. So the insertion of the Achilles is going to be on the calcaneum. Uh, here's a schematic representation of what we are looking at. We'll be looking at this tendon up here going on to the Achilles, uh, and then we'll see what the ultrasound picture looks like. So this is the same picture that's shown here. The patient is lying prone, and what you're doing is you're putting the probe where the green line is. And what that gives you is gives you a beam that goes shoots through the Achilles posteriorly, as is shown in this picture here. There's the probe. That's where the Achilles tendon is. And that's what the tendon would look like. So there's the probe again, and there's the Achilles tendon. You can see the nice fibers very well. And what you see underneath this bright portion is the calcaneum, which is the bone on which the Achilles inserts. And there's the calcaneum over there. Uh, apart from looking at the sag portion, you also want to look at transverse. So what you do is turn the probe 90 degrees to the portion that you're scanning, and you should be able to get a 90 degree view of that same Achilles tendon. Now when you do that, sometimes the probe is going to be bigger than the ankle, so what you would have is a dropout on both sides, and that's normal to have it. Uh, and here's the picture that shows in transverse, and there's the Achilles tendon. And as I said before, here's the dropout that you see that's just that the probe is not in contact on these two areas. But other than that, you can see nice fibers through the Achilles, and also what you see is the tendon is oval shaped. What happens is most normal tendons appear oval. Uh, and that's something to remember, no matter where the tendons are, because 
once they start to get inflamed or swollen, the tendon tends to become more round. Uh, this is even before the tear happens or other pathologies happen. If it's a very subtle change, it's going to be more circular, and also this looks bright. Most pathologies in musculoskeletal, when they have pathology, they look dark, which is hypoechoic. Uh, the text material, what I showed you here, is basically telling you what I, I'm speaking, so this is just for your reference. Uh, what you also get when you have a tear, uh, like I said before, here's the area of a tear where the normal fibers are missing, and what you see here is the hypoechoic area, or darker area, and you can see the tendon is so much thicker. What you see underneath here is the white portion. This is just the fat. That's usually, the fat is usually underneath it, and it herniates through that tear, so it's normal sometimes to see a bright area within a tear that just something called as a Kagar's fat. And this is the same thing seen in transverse. There's the transverse, there's the fat underneath it, and there's the normal tendon on the left side. Uh, something else to remember when we look at the tendons. Remember, we always talk about tendon pathology, but also it's important to remember something that goes around the tendon, which is the tendon sheath. So sometimes the patient can have pain or uh, symptoms but the tendon might be fine, it's just the sheath around the tendon that's inflamed. And the inflammation usually appears hypoechoic or dark or black because usually there's a little bit of fluid or inflammation and that's what you see up here. And you can see it's around the tendon. Most tendons have sheath. Uh, tendons like Achilles don't have a sheath, so that's something to remember. And here's another example of an Achilles tendon. You can see the tear in between. There's the long axis of the tendon. You can see how thick this is and it's hypoechoic or darker and then you see tears in between. Now even this part is not normal because it's dark. The same thing seen in transverse. Again, the transverse tendon, you can see how it's more, oval, or more round as opposed to oval, and what you see here is again a tear, but again, this part is also not normal. Now sometimes when you have inflammation, what you can find is there's increased flow on color Doppler, or as in, as in this case, power Doppler. Uh, in this patient, there was a very small tear uh, that came up. This patient was actually a Philadelphia Marathon runner. In fact, she actually won the Philly Marathon the year before, and what we found was she had this pain on that Achilles tendon on that side. And when we scanned her, what we found was this inflamed flow, and there was a small tear that was present there. All this is basically the body's ability to heal and kind of get to that tear. Uh, what you can also find sometimes is chronic changes. What it means is you could have tear that might have healed. So it's important to remember that when you compare sometimes to the opposite side and you find something that looks like a pathology, it's important to compare if the patient has pain or not. If the patient doesn't have pain, it means that's something very chronic, that the patient had problem before and now it's gone and the tendon may not go back to like a totally normal tendon like as if it was normal. There's some residual effect left from that tendon. Same thing again here, you can see there's the transverse, here's the hypoechoic area that can mimic pathology. The other thing to look posteriorly, apart from the Achilles tendon, which we just saw, is the what's called as a retrocalcaneal bursa, and that's the bursa that's present there. Uh, it's a very small bursa that you can see on ultrasound. Normally, it's about two to three millimeters. And what you see in this case is a very subtle anechoic area, or what's called as a hypoechoic area. So what you see is there's the bursa on the anatomy and there's the bursa on the ultrasound. This is normal fluid to be seen, but this should be very minimal. It should not be very thick. Uh, if you have a bursitis or retrocalcular bursitis, this thing is going to be inflamed. And here's an example. There's the red area that's inflamed. That's the bursa that's inflamed. And you can see this bursa is pretty thick and inflamed. So the patient can have a bursitis and have pain just from the fluid and the inflammation in the bursa. Uh, the next tendon we'll look at is the posterior tibial tendon, uh, which is the second most commonly injured tendon uh, after the Achilles, and also a very major or a big tendon. Uh, the tendon is situated on the medial side. There's the medial malleolus, so or the bony landmark that you can feel on your feet, on your or on your ankle, and right behind it will be the posterior tibial, tibialis posterior, or posterior tibial, and the next to that will be the flexor digitorum. The scanning position is the same. You go from the posterior part of the ankle and move medially, and there's the medial malleolus. So if you actually feel on your ankle, you can feel this bony structure, and you just go on top of it that or posteriorly, and you want to scan more horizontal. 
Uh, one of the mistakes people make is when they scan, they go sideways into the tendon, and they don't see it because the tendon is in that groove. And once you have that image, what you see is a pretty nice, beautiful tendon there, which is the posterior tibial. And you can see again how the landmarks are very nice hypoechoic fibers, uh, very uniform. And sometimes you'll see hypoechoic areas on both sides. And that's just a normal sheath around the tendon, which is normal. And these fibers should be normal. They should not look dark, and they should not look disruptive. Uh, what we do with this tendon, going back to the anatomy picture, is you want to follow this tendon all the way up to the insertion onto the bone that's called the navicular. And we don't follow all the other tendons because very few of them tend to have pathology distally, but this one we do because we found quite a few of them have pathology. And what we found was, here's the distal posterior tibial that's going in and inserting onto the navicular. Now, if you see these fibers, they're all horizontal, but as they come in, you find that this kind of spreads out. And this is normal appearance because what is happening at this 90 degrees from the top is missing in this case because the tendons from there move up, the tendons from there move down, and what you're getting in this case is not a very perfect picture, but that's normal. Also, if you notice, there's some fluid there, and that fluid is normal to be present. We find sometimes in ankle ultrasound there are areas where small amount of normal fluid is seen, and that's even documented on MRI. Uh, it shouldn't be too much or it shouldn't be too uh, uneven from the opposite side. This is the posterior tibial, the same tendon in transverse. Uh, you can see it's about two to two and a half times the size of the flexor digitorum, which is next to it. And there's the medial malleolus. So you can see how tightly in the groove that thing sits. Here's an example of a pathology. If you look at the normal and now we compare the pathology, this tendon looks okay, but as it comes further up, you can see there's the tear going through the posterior tibial. And what you also see is this darker and thickened area. This is the inflammation. So there's definitely a tendon tear and also some inflammation or tendonitis up here. Another example of tendon pathology, there's the posterior tibial. You can see it's hypoechoic and it's inflamed. And you don't see the normal uh, category of the fibers. Same thing again, posterior tibial tear. Some of the fibers appear okay, but for most part, it's very thick and inflamed. Maybe there's some fluid around the tendon. Uh, here's an example in transverse, the same posterior tibial, and what you're seeing up here, this is the tendon. What you see in between is the tear. So the tendon appears like it's split into two, and this is like a linear th tear going through the, the tendon. There's a the flexor digitorum, which is much smaller and normal. Another example of a tear. Now, this tear is more near the insertion. Remember we said we usually follow this tendon on the insertion to the nav navicular bone, and what you're seeing up here is the inflamed tendon, which is hypoechoic. Same thing again in transverse. An inflamed tendon looks dark. You can see you don't see the bright fibers that you're normally used to seeing in a normal tendon. Some similar example, this part of the tendon looks fine, but as you go further up, you can see this part of the tendon is torn. And you can see around, this is the edge of the tendon. You can see around the tendon, there's some inflammation, which is hypoechoic. Same thing again, distally, there's the proximal end, there's the distal end, and you can see those normal fibers that should be going along. If they are missing, this is the hypoechoic area, which is tear at the insertion. Uh, the next tendon we look at is the flexor digitorum, uh, which is right next to the PTT. It's about half to one-third of the size. Uh, we don't see too many pathologies with this tendon. There's the posterior tibial, and the scanning position is the same. You scan vertically, scan more near the ankle. And here's the tendon that you see posteriorly. Uh, again, this is a normal tendon. Like I said, you don't see too many pathologies with flexor digitorum. Again, in transverse, there's the flexor digitorum. There's the posterior tibial. It just sort of shows the comparison of the size between the flexor digitorum and the posterior tibial. The third tendon to imagine on the, on the medial side is the flexor hallucis. Uh, initially, we didn't look at this normally, but we have had times when we found a pathology that was actually missed on MRI. Uh, the patient came in with a pain on the medial side, and they thought there was a cyst, or maybe the patient had DVT. And what ended up happening was, when we, I was scanning this patient, what we found was something much more deeper. So if you look at this patient here, there's the flex, flexor hallucis, and you can see how inflamed it is. Uh, the reason we found this was, when I was scanning, the patient said the pain was 
not very superficial, it grows much deeper, and the flexed hallux is a much deeper tendon. So here's an example, and I'll show you the normal for comparison. You can see this inflamed, there's all this fluid, and that's the tendon there. And here's the comparison in transverse. There's the transverse tendon. You can see it's inflamed. There's the tendon, and you can see all this fluid around. And if you look at the normal side, there's the normal. You can see in comparison that it looks much smaller. There's no fluid around the tendon, and this tendon has that nice echo texture and bright spots that you see, which is normal. Uh, once we're done with the medial side, what we now do is we go to the lateral side, which is on the, this is the lateral side, there's the lateral malleolus, and now we are looking at these two tendons that go parallel to each other behind the lateral malleolus. Now you can follow that up to the insertion at the fifth metatarsal if you want. For most part, you're looking at this area. And what you find is when you're scanning, again, the scanning position is the same. There's the lateral aspect of the tendon. Uh, you can see how the patient is lying comfortably. You looked at the posterior, you looked at the medial, and now you're looking at the lateral side. And if you look at the bony landmark, that's the lateral malleolus. So you want to be in that groove when you scan. And what you see in this case are two tendons on top of each other. That's the peroneus longus and the brevis, which is deeper. Uh, if you go back to the anatomy picture, you can see how they lie on top of each other. On the medial side, they lie side to side. So when you see them, you appear, they appear side to side, and you have to visualize one tendon and then the other. On this side, when you scan from there, you see both these tendons in the same plane, and that's what is happening there. This part is the longus. You can see there's a little bit of division there, and then this part is the brevis. Uh, you can look at them in transverse, again, in that same groove. And what you see is there's the tendon in transverse. So there's the longus on top, brevis at the bottom. And sometimes this has been called as a pair of stack of pancakes because they lie on top of each other. And there's the lateral malleolus at the bottom. Now what you're looking for in this case, apart from tear and inflammation, is something else happens on the lateral side that's a little different from the medial. You can get a subluxation of this tendon. And subluxation is basically when the tendon from there goes over the lateral malleolus and goes, goes to the opposite side on this end. So you don't want the tendon when the patient flexes the knee to go on the opposite side. And here's an example of the peroneus longus and brevis. You can see there's the tear and there's the brevis which looks a little bit okay. Here's a, again an example of the brevis at the bottom which looks nice and bright but the longus is hypoechoic and there's also some fluid there. Uh, this is basically a colorized image. Uh, there was a technology that came a few years ago and people thought maybe uh, this might help to identify a pathology much better because your eyes are more sensitive to color image. Uh, unfortunately, that did not turn out to be true. We did some blinded studies with people and then turned out we gave a bunch of studies that were colorized and some of them were actually colorized on a machine and some were colorized using Photoshop. And we found that, unfortunately, that technology did not hold true. Uh, even though you can see the darker areas better on color. Uh, the other thing that can happen is on the lateral side, there's the peroneus longus and brevis. Sometimes the longus can hit the brevis against the bony landmark posteriorly, and it can actually split the tendon into two. So instead of seeing just two tendons, now you're looking at one, two, and three. And what you're looking at the bottom is basically a brevis that's split. So this is a split tear for the brevis, and that's the pathology, whereas the longus looks fine. Uh, what we do next is once we start finishing the posterior aspect of it, uh, we go anteriorly. So what you want to do is have the patient sit up now and look at the anterior tibial tendon. Uh, what ends up happening usually is you, we look at a bunch of tendons anteriorly, but we focus more on the anterior tibial tendon. Uh, now, there's, if you look, read in the literature, they say that there's not as many pathologies with anterior tibial tendon. Uh, but we did find quite a few of them. And part of the reason they say you don't have as much pathology is it has good vascular supply. Uh, we've had a couple of examples when the patient came in with a tear. Uh, here's the normal anterior tibial tendon. And if you look at the pathology, here's an example of a pathology where the tendon is inflamed and torn. And what you find there is their anechoic or hyperechoic area. Here's another example of a patient who came in with the anterior tibial tendon tear. And you can see how thick this tendon is. Uh, this patient actually had been to like three or four different doctors and 
was almost 76 years old, so nobody thought that she had any pathology. Uh, they all just thought she had arthritis, and they asked her to take some medicine, go home. And she came to us for a, one of the different studies we were doing, and it was more of an RST patient that we were scanning, but she came in thinking she might have RST. And when I scanned her, what we found was here was an example of a torn tendon. Uh, and she did have history of trauma, except she didn't realize she had it. Uh, what this patient was actually doing was she was 76 years old and had started going to a gym about five or six months ago. And what she did was basically uh, tore that when she was doing extension exercise and didn't realize that that was causing it. And then she stopped going to the gym. Here's the same image in transverse. There's the anterior tibial tendon. There's the hallucis. There's the digitorum. And you can see how big this tendon. It's circular and it's hypoechoic. Apart from the tendons, there are a few other structures you can look at in the ankle. Uh, one of the popular ones is obviously plantar fascia. Uh, this is at the bottom of the foot, and you can almost see it in all the patients. Uh, sometimes you, people say, oh, it's too hard to see plantar fascia because you know, it's too hard to identify, but I can tell you we can almost see it in every single patient. Uh, what you see basically is there's the plantar fascia, there's the insertion on the calcaneum, and what you want to do is you want to scan from the posterior aspect and try to find this portion of the fascia. That's the one that has more pathology. Uh, the pathology can be focal or it can be diffuse. The focal will be up here or the diffuse. Uh, what you can also do is you measure the thickness of it. So there's the calcaneum, there's the plantar fascia, and what you're looking at in this case is a nice normal fascia that's about two to three millimeters in thickness, and there's the insertion. Uh, in an inflamed fascia, either you will have a focal inflammation or you'll have a diffuse inflammation where the whole tendon is inflamed. And here's an example of a plantar fasciitis where the numbers in terms of thickness almost double. And here's an example of a plantar fascia. You can see from the top, here's an inflammation. You can see how thick this tendon is or fascia is. And it's also very hypoechoic. So that's definitely a, a, a generalized uh, plantar fascia or fasciitis. Here's another example of a person who came in, uh, and you can see there's the plantar fascia. In this case, it's a little bit over the calcaneum. You see this anechoic area. Uh, this is where the patient was hurting. Uh, if you look at color Doppler or power Doppler, sometimes you can see increased flow there. And this is because this is an acute inflammation, and most acute inflammations tend to have increased flow. Uh, if you compare the left to the right, here's an example of the plantar fascia that looks abnormal. There's the normal fascia that's it shows nice fibers within. In fact, not only that, when, the, when I was scanning this foot, I asked the patient where it hurts, and she said it hurts more on the medial aspect, and this is a transverse image of a fascia with the medial aspect of the tendon. And you can see how the patient where she points to the pain is the area where the inflammation is, and that's confirmed by ultrasound with the power Doppler. Uh, anytime you see power Doppler, I always try to confirm it with pulse Doppler, uh, you want to make sure it's not just an artifact uh, that you're looking at. And here's, again, an example of a plantar fasciitis. You can see in long axis how thick the fascia is. You can see the numbers. It's almost twice the size. Normally, it's 2 to 3 millimeters. And what you see up here is about almost 6 millimeters. And here's an example where you confirm that fasciitis of flow with actually Doppler. And you can see an arterial flow because so you know that that's a real flow that's coming in. Here's a normal fascia, and you can see it's about three millimeters. So you can definitely think this is thinner. And then we, when we saw earlier, there's the one with an abnormal. You can see it's like twice the size. Uh, even though few millimeters might not mean much, but when it goes from three millimeters to six millimeters, that's almost double the size. So it's definitely something to remember. Uh, here's an example, again, on the opposite side for the plantar fascia and transverse. You can see there's no flaw because this was an asymptomatic side. And there's a symptomatic side, again, with increased flow. Uh, there are other things you can see with ultrasound in the ankle. Uh, one of the things we've had very good luck with is a foreign body. Uh, most of the time, when you have foreign bodies, obviously you know that the foreign bodies, if it's metal, it'll show up on x-ray. But if it's wood or if it's glass uh, or some other material that won't show up on x-ray, uh, ultrasound can be very good. And what you see in most of those cases, you see something that's very bright. Uh, the good thing is, over a period of time, there's an inflammatory reaction to the foreign body, and you get this 
hypoechoic area around that's just an inflammation. So what you're seeing in this case is the inflammation around the foreign body. This is the foreign body. Uh, this patient actually came in in one of our practices, and what we did was, under ultrasound guidance, we removed it. Uh, she was actually on pain for quite a few weeks because they had missed it. They had taken part of the foreign body out, but this small area that was there was left behind, and you can see nicely on ultrasound. There are other things you can look at. Um, this is the toe, and this patient came in, and she had stubbed her toe against the coffee table. And what we found was, you know, so I said, you know, you can come in. She actually was one of our coworkers, and I said, just come on in, we'll take a look. Here's a normal toe or the bone, and here's the bone that you see on the fifth toe that you can see there's a fracture there. And obviously, this was very well seen on ultrasound. Also, there was a lot of inflammation at the top of the fracture. And here's, again, an example of a fracture that you see very well on ultrasound. Uh, she was in a lot of pain, and she was going to ignore it because she thought it hopefully was just a stubbed toe. But she does have a fracture. Uh, there's some flow there. And you can see this is the fifth toe. There's flow. The place where there is no fracture, you can see there's no flow. Here's an example, again, looking at the soft tissue over the area. You can see there's so much flow and inflammation. Even on transverse, you can see how that circular area of a bone is broken, because that's where the fracture was. You can see Morton's neuroma on ultrasound very well. Uh, Morton's neuroma is something that happens between the third and the fourth toe. And it's basically an inflammation or neuroma coming from the nerve. On a normal ultrasound, you may not be able to see the nerve. But when you have the neuroma, you can scan from the plantar aspect. And what you can do is you can push from the, from the dorsal aspect and scan from the plantar aspect. And what you're looking for is there's the nerve and there's the inflamed neuroma. And what you see is this is the nerve up here, and there's the neuroma that you see very well. Uh, there are other things you can see. Here's an example of when we did this for the first time, we had no idea what this patient had. Uh, the surgeon sent this patient in and said that the tendon looks fine, but the patient does have a lot of pain on that side. And he wanted us to find out what that was. And turns out, when we saw this, like I said, this, there were very few things reported in the literature. And what it turned out was this patient had a history of gout. And what these are, what you see up here is our gout or tophi crystals. And what you see in between is a tendon that's totally normal. So in this case, in fact, there was an added incentive because the surgeon said to us that if you tell us what's wrong with this patient, I'll send you all my patients. So it was a good incentive to look at it. And turns out now many people have reported that now. Some people even do injections or serial injections that you can flush the tophi crystals out uh, from that area where, it, where you can see them on ultrasound. So this is SAG. Here's an example in transverse. Yeah, that's pretty much it for the ankle ultrasound and the tendons that we can image.